Hi Taurus, welcome to your July 2024 horoscope. Before we get into it, I do have to let you know that we are not going to talk about all of the transits of the month of July. When I was preparing, I was going through the chart, looking at everything that was happening. I was really surprised by everything. There are a lot of like trines and sextile, sextiles with Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, uh, that honestly, if we're to talk about all of them, we're going to be here for a while. Uh, so what I have decided to do for this horoscope is to choose the ones that are going to be the most prevalent, perhaps the most intense, uh, the ones that are uh, going to be the biggest events of the month and uh, talk about those during this horoscope. So let's start off with uh, Neptune going retrograde. This is happening on July 2nd and Neptune will stay retrograde until December of this year. For you, Taurus, Neptune is retrograde in your 11th house. And Neptune has been in your 11th house since 2011, so really a decent amount of time. And while it's been in your 11th house, it's been asking you to think about the goals, the dreams that you have about your goals, I should say. Uh, all of the ideals of the things you want to achieve and the future life you imagine for yourself. It's been asking you to see how you can make those dreams come a reality but it's also been asking you which one of them are maybe unrealistic and you need to scrap and now that neptune is retrograde it's time for you to reflect on all of this it's time to go inwards to think about the actions you might have taken think about whether you need to readjust course I do advise, however, uh, to keep a list of actions of uh, what you would like to do, how you would like to correct course, uh, because it's best to do those activities once Neptune goes direct, which again will happen in December of this year. On July 6th, we have a new moon in Cancer happening in your third house. A new moon represents a new beginning. So for you, Taurus, it might be a new beginning with your local community. Perhaps you're able to reestablish a new tradition with your neighbors or with your siblings. Or perhaps you're starting to write a new book or start a new teaching job because, of course, the third house also represents communication. On July 10th, we have two interesting aspects. We have the sun trining Saturn, and we have Venus trining Neptune. And these two transits or aspects are highlighting your third and your 11th house. When I interpret this aspect or transit for you, Taurus, I really see it as this idea that your neighbors and your siblings are helping you in achieving your long-term goals. Perhaps they're sharing something with you that makes you realize, oh, this is what I need to do to achieve that goal. Or perhaps they're able to support you in such a way that makes achieving those goals much easier. On July 11th, Venus will enter Leo, which is your fourth house. And as it does that, it also opposes Pluto. I gotta say, Pluto is quite important in July. Pluto, Pluto is gonna be quite central in July. Uh, we have Venus opposing it. Later in the month, we also have the sun opposing it. And we also have a full moon that highlights uh, Pluto as well. So with the opposition, we are talking about attention, a feeling that you're being pulled in two different directions. And for you, Taurus, this, these two directions are the direction of home and the direction of your career. And specifically, you might be feeling like there's a part of you that wants to stay home, where it's safe, where it's comfortable, where it's, you feel secure, you're not challenged, and a part of you that feels like, no, I want to step up to the challenge in my career. I want to achieve something great. I want to go out into the world where people can get upset and they can get angry and where I need to have difficult conversations with people. On July 14th, we have one of perhaps the biggest events of the month, which is a conjunction between Mars and Uranus. 
for you Taurus, this is happening in your first house. So especially for you, this one might be intense out of all the other zodiac signs. The Mars and Uranus conjunction means that you're feeling bold with standing up for yourself. You're feeling bold with showing the unique weird parts of you that others might judge. But it can also be quite explosive. Uh, and especially because this is happening in your first house, I would just advise to be careful with how out there you put yourself, how loud you speak, how much uh, you express your leadership, and whether you are perhaps, um, what is that line where a leader starts to turn into a dictator and uh, making sure that's sort of kept in check during this transit. A couple of days later, on the 20th of July, Mars will leave your first house, enter your second house, or the sign of Gemini. Mars in the sign of Gemini can feel quite scattered. Uh, it can have the tendency to stretch itself thin. And this is honestly a word of caution I'm giving to all of the zodiac signs. I think especially for you though, Taurus, this is happening in your house of finances, your house of self-confidence and self-respect. Uh, so I would just caution you against picking up 10 different side hustles that are going to bring you money. Um, I would caution against trying out uh, 50 different modalities that help you with establishing uh, better self-worth and self-confidence. And instead, keep your mind open, of course. Keep your mind curious and, and look out for opportunities. Uh, but maybe just think of, can I pick the, the top five, the top three, and um, focus on those the day after, on July 21st, we have a full moon in Capricorn. This full moon definitely has the Plutonian influence. This is because the moon is at 29 degrees of Capricorn, Pluto is at one degree of Aquarius, so they are very, very close with each other. And also because Mars is trining Pluto, so further highlighting this Plutonian theme. A full moon represents uh, an awareness, something coming to light. And what I've sort of been telling all of the zodiac signs is that I think this piece of information or this awareness has to do with the transit, the 20 year long transit we all experienced, which is Pluto and Capricorn. And the reason I interpret this full moon in this way is because the full moon is happening at 29 degrees of Capricorn, but also because Pluto is retrograde. So it's slowly making its way back towards that 29th degree. So I do think that we're going to have some type of different understanding or awareness of what it was that we experienced for the last 20 years. I do not think that uh, this revelation or this awareness is going to be necessarily something dramatic, even though Pluto is involved. Uh, we also have Venus and Jupiter and Neptune involved in the full moon. So because of this, I do think that the awareness or the thing that's coming to light will feel a little bit more like the missing puzzle piece, the missing piece of information that makes it all fit, that helps us see the bigger picture, that helps us understand why we had to go through what we went through, how it has made us into a better person today. So yeah, this is something that I think will be central for all of the zodiac signs. And for you, Taurus, Pluto was, uh, for the last 20 years, in your ninth house. So this might bring up the themes of uh, holding strongly onto your belief system, really establishing yourself. What are your values? What are um, your morals that you want to fashion your lifestyle after? And all of the things that you have been experiencing and thinking about in the last 20 years around that theme, there might be a sort of reconsideration or a little extra thing that you missed in the last 20 years that comes to light during this full moon. I do also have to share that the day after the sun enters uh, Leo and therefore opposes Pluto exactly. 
So because this aspect is not exact during the full moon, but the day after the full moon, I do also have a feeling that this full moon will be a little bit more drawn out. Uh, it might be that the crescendo takes a little bit longer or the duration of it is a little bit longer, more drawn out. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Otherwise, one more piece of advice for the Sun and Pluto opposition is to take a look at what happened when Venus opposed Pluto, because most likely similar themes will come up for the Sun opposing Pluto. And I want to close off this horoscope by talking about Sun sextile Mars. This is going to happen on July 25th. For you, Taurus, the Sun is in your fourth house and Mars is in your second house. Mars has been in your second house for about five days at this point, but hopefully you've been putting in time and attention to your finances, to establishing your own self-respect and self-worth. And on July 25th, I do feel like this will be a day where you see this have a positive effect on your familial relationships. It has a positive effect on your sense of belonging with your family and maybe even has a positive effect on your home. Uh, perhaps that self-worth you've been building up is translating to your home and all of a sudden you realize, wait a second, this is not a type of home where I feel um, worthy of or, or respectful of and I, I need to sort of shift and have my home reflected as well. So overall, Taurus, wow. Yes, July is going to be quite powerful, especially because you have quite a few things happening in your angular houses. I know you got this. I believe in you. Before I let you go, Taurus, I do wanted to remind you that I am doing a giveaway. When we reach a thousand subscribers on this channel, I am giving one of you a free reading. So if you want to make sure you grab a chance to win, then make sure you subscribe. I hope to see you again soon, Taurus, and I hope you have a wonderful July.